check it out. We are looking at the South Kaibab Trail here. I'm gonna give this information pretty quick. This is Ua Point. And I'm gonna be quick, but I'm also gonna be thorough. So this is South Kaibab Trail. You can see the people walking there. I'm gonna show you guys basically if you just wanna try out a Grand Canyon hike, maybe you're just, you just wanna check it out and see what the trails are like, or maybe you just don't have that much time. This is a hike you can do uh, by parking your car, riding the shuttle to the trailhead, doing the hike, hiking back up, ride the shuttle back to your car. You can do it all in less than two hours. So step one, you are gonna GPS and drive to the Grand Canyon Visitor Center on the South Rim or Mather Point. Once you park your car, you could walk up, and uh, this is just footage from a, a different day, but I'm zooming out here to show you guys. Uh, Mather Point is about, it's over a mile line of sight. So now let's jump into me actually doing the hike. You've driven to the Grand Canyon South Rim Visitor Center. You have parked your car, and you're gonna walk south down here to the shuttle bus hub the big shuttle bus station right here. You're looking for the orange bus, and this is the Kaibab route. It's gonna take you uh, out on the Desert View Drive to the South Kaibab Trailhead. Time is 10.06, and these buses come pretty frequently, so let's see what's going on. Here's your schedule. So this is November 1st. Uh, I'm gonna get my last bus at 5.55. I should be fine. We got a bus uh, every 15 to 30 minutes. This is the bus you want. And I believe they're coming around right now. These shuttle buses are free and they basically, from sunup to sundown, they run about every 15 to 30 minutes. So you don't really need to look up a timetable. Uh, just know I did this in the times of COVID where not all the buses are running. This this orange bus is running and I don't know why the marquee you're going to see here. The marquee says green route and then it says orange route. I don't know if maybe they're using the term green route just because of alterations due to COVID. But if you are going and it's still COVID time, you have to wear a face mask and you got to enter through the rear doors. You're actually going to enter through the rear doors of the bus after the other people, of course, come off. The shuttle bus driver will give you a lot of information. If you guys want to see the canyon on your way to the trailhead, sit on the left side of the bus. Now this bus is going to first go to the trailhead. It then goes out to the Yaki Point. They've got a fence around the water station just to keep the elk out of it. But you can go, you can go in there and fill up water. They're gonna keep that running until it starts to freeze. So they get freezing camps. So everybody getting off the bus, trail is straight up there, and then there are toilets over here. From about mid-May to mid-November, you can fill up water. It's drinkable water. However, when temperatures are freezing, they will shut that water off. I got the COVID mask. It's November 1st. Still gotta have a mask on the bus, uh, but we're about to drop in here. So you get a map. Before you go down, you got a map here. And so we uh, basically are up here on the South Rim. We are right here. We're gonna go down. Um, it's not even on the map, Ua, uh, but it's a, it's a pretty quick hike. Uh, so you got a little smaller map here, but um, yeah, it's not even a mile, 0.9. 1.5k and so you got about 1.8 round trip or you got a 3k round trip I'm gonna keep the mileage on the lower left of the screen there so you guys know that's the round trip mileage now I'm going down the trail just know some of the things you definitely want to bring water there's not going to be any chance to fill up water while you are on this trail and like i said in the winter you can't even fill up water at the top so i do suggest each person brings two liters of water and that would be basically four of those 16 ounce plastic water bottles 
But seriously, guys, try to buy an actual reusable water bottle, you know, for the sake of the planet, uh, for the sake of even just yourself. It's free water. Bring your own bottle. Um, but yeah, get a big one liter bottle or, um, you know, two one liter bottles. You know, you could make this hike happen with one liter, but I'm saying bring more water than you think you need because you never know when you might end up saving somebody's life. It's better to have more. I mean, think about how, how good that's gonna feel that you actually brought so much that maybe there's somebody who's coming up who ran out of water on their way up from the bottom and you ha happen to have extra water that you can give to them. There's Ua Point right there in the sunlight. Now also some rules of the road. Always allow hikers that are coming up, allow them to pass you. Like I, I took a pause there, but that guy also took a pause. It's now 10.42. But you know, traditionally try to allow hikers coming up to pass you because they're suffering a bit more than you. And you're gonna find that out very soon when you turn around to come back up. 10.43, and I'm just waiting. The, the mules are kind of checking the mules and whatnot. They're just hanging out of here, but that's Uwa Point right there. So, you know, consider I'm walking, I'm not running. You get down here, you hang out a little bit, maybe have some food, turn around and head back. That's when the hike really begins. This is not the most typical thing to have mules stopped on the trail like this. Um, mules are going up and down the canyon each day. You get people riding mules, you get pack mules that take uh, mail and supplies down to the bottom, and then they bring garbage back up. These particular workers and these mules, what they're doing is trail maintenance. You know, understand the Grand Canyon is constantly growing bigger. It, the sides are eroding every time it rains, and so the trails fall apart all the time. So what these workers are doing is they are filling in dirt, basically like filling in potholes on the trail. 10.55. Now be careful when you get down here because this looks like a nice place to hang out and sit, but that really is a straight up cliff right there. You can go a little further to Cedar Ridge. And then there's some toilets. All right, 10.56. And I'll start heading back up there now. These guys are working on the trail, so this will give you guys a really good idea because I'm, I'm definitely getting slowed down a bit because the trail maintenance, so you guys will be able to do this a bit quicker. So now the hike like really, really begins, and I, I really work this out to scale. We've got Eiffel Tower, Washington Monument, Statue of Liberty. So we're showing, in order for me to get back up to the top, even though I got down there pretty quick in like 30 minutes, in order for me to get back up to the top, I'm climbing the equivalent of 76 flights of stairs. So it's about 760 feet elevation change. And this is when you really need the water. Don't, you know, if you drank more than half your water, it's time to turn around because you need the bulkier water on the way up. You're going to take breaks. Also realize you're starting at 7,000. All right, it's now 11.07 and the last bit of trail, or actually the first bit of trail as well, is what we call the chimney because it is so steep, a lot of switchbacks. So you end this hike with the hardest part. Here we go up the chimney. So this is what's really, really gonna make you remember that you are at elevation. The air is thinner here. So you definitely, before you even start the hike, drink enough water that you have to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom and then carry your two liters. Also not a bad idea to bring electrolyte 
tablets or salty snacks because that salt is gonna help that water cling to your inner organs. 11.19 and I'm back up here to the top. So the actual hike, only about an hour for that actual hike. Let's see if we got a bus coming. Here comes the bus, coming back in. The buses will come by frequently, so very easy to hop on. And uh, thank you guys. You know, if you found this useful, helpful, please give a thumbs up. If you guys are wanting to learn a lot about Grand Canyon, thank you. hit that subscribe button. All right, we're back at the visitor center and it's only 11.36, so there you can see it. Easily less than two hours, less than two hours from parking your car hopping on that orange bus, going out there, doing the hike, bring a bus, a bus back. Now, obviously it could take longer due to several reasons. And, and really there's no reason to rush it. My point is just to show you how it can be done in less than two hours.